Hey everybody, before the show starts, log on to musicmoneymakeover.com forward slash shop to download all my books and free guides. And while you're there, click on the book a call tab to book a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me to get all your music business questions solved. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham, and on this episode, we're talking about how you can make 64 checks, music publishing checks in this music industry, uh, a year. All right, now, I know that to some this may sound impossible, but with all of the things that I talk about my channel, you can clearly see that it is not impossible, especially when you see all the companies that I list in Copyright Explained. Now, really quickly, if you want to donate to the channel, you can do so right over here. And if you want to skip Copyright Explained, which I don't think you should um, for today's video, but if you want to, you can do so right down below. Let's jump into Copyright Explained. Copyright. The sole right which an author has in their own original literary compositions. The exclusive right of an author to print, publish, and vend their own literary works for their own benefit. Now, of course, there are two main rights of copy that the music industry operates and revolves around, and that's the masters and the publishing. And the masters is referred to as the sound recording copyright. Sound recordings as in records, masters, phonogram, or the audio recording file, i.e. the WAV MP3 AIFF of the composition and or song. Now, you can collect your master recording royalties or the proceeds due from the sale and streaming of the master recording via your distributor like TuneCore DistroKid. And if you have a major label deal, then it's them. All right. Now, you can also collect the performance royalties via the master sound recording via SoundExchange and PPL over in the UK. SoundExchange is based here in America. And if you are outside of America, any other organization that collects these sound recording performance royalties are referred to as neighboring rights. Now, publishing is referred to as a performing arts copyright here in America. Okay, performing arts as in the composition, sheet, music, MIDI files, publishing, or song to be performed. You can collect the performance royalties for the composition via BMI, CSAC, ASCAP here in America, and PRS over in the UK, and other countries have their own performing rights organization as well to collect those royalties for you. All right, now... You can collect the mechanical royalties due from the composition via Harry Fox, Music Reports, and the Mechanical Licensing Collective here in America. You can also collect your mechanical royalties over in the UK from MCPS. So now, Lyric Fine right here. You can get your Lyric Display royalties from Lyric Fine and Music Match, but that's that. Let's go through the six rights of copyright to be exercised to the fullest extent of the United States Code under Title 17, and that's the right to reproduce, the right to reproduce the copyrighted work in copies or phono records, physical or digital format, the right to prepare derivative works, the right to prepare derivative works based upon the copyrighted work, the right to distribute, the right to distribute copies or phono records of the copyrighted work to the public by sale or other transfer of ownership or by rental, lease or lending. And then we have the right to public performance the right to perform the copyrighted work publicly, the right to public display, the right to display the copyrighted work publicly, and the right to digital performance, and that's the right to digital audio transmission performance. All right, everybody, so we're back from Copyright Explained, and I gotta give a disclaimer about, I got, I'm gonna give a few disclaimers about today's video, but I wanna tell you what's not included in this video. All right, so I'm gonna flash something up on the screen really quickly. Uh, so CSAC is an invite-only PRO, and that is not included in today's video. Uh, PPL, those are UK neighboring rights and are for record labels only. So, you know, record labels can collect at PPL over there, but only for record labels. Lyric Fine, even though I mention it on this channel, they can pay directly through the Harry Fox agency. For So for that reason, I didn't include them. And then MCPS and PRS are United Kingdom based um, organizations. And we are based here in America, as we would say so in the South. Okay, so now as I jump into today's video, you will see the other disclaimers about publishers versus self-publishers and who will be able to collect this number of 64 checks. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into the video and I'm going to teach you how you can get all this bread and, and just in just a little rant before we hop in you can actually get way more checks than 64 checks i just didn't want to kill everybody with all the jargon like all the sauce all the game and all the gems i didn't want to give it all away but at least i'm giving you enough and for the, for the american rights right for for the american writers you can take this if you're from australia or if you're from the uk 
or any other European countries, then you can kind of adapt this to what it is that's going on in your countries because a lot of you all have monopolized organizations over in your countries. Now, let us jump into the slides. All right, everybody. So here we go. We're back in the computer again. All right. And I figured instead of like how we do the copyright explain thing, I'm going to break down each phase of, or each type of check you will be getting from these different organizations. And it would be helpful if I would use the copywritten protocol for it or the copyright protocol or the copyright law for it. All right. So according to Section 106, exclusive rights and copyrighted works. We're touching on the right to reproduction. I just want to let you know this is where it is in the law. It's in Section 106 of Title 17 of the United States Code. All right. Subject to Sections 107 through 122. The owner of copyright under this title has the exclusive rights to do and to authorize any of the following. Number one, to reproduce the copyrighted work in copies or phono records. OK, so then what does this mean? What right is this associated with? Well, it is associated with the mechanical royalty rights and with the Harry Fox agency, you can get 12 checks a year once a month. Harry Fox will pay you mechanical royalties here. All right. Just sign up for the direct deposit. Boom. You in there. All right. Harry Fox will be paying for stuff like ringtones, for digital print royalties and other things that require the reproduction, like the exercise bike, the Peloton or whatever that thing is. Get your money here for the reproduction of your song. Right. They there there are three different agencies in the United States for all of my UK listeners and Australia listeners that pay. We got to break up the, the mechanical royalty monopoly here. That was just Harry Fox. And the first person to do so was music reports. But but that's another story for another another day. The granddaddy Harry Fox used to collect for everybody, but they don't anymore. OK, but you can get some mechanical money here at Harry Fox and also Anybody who wants to cover your record has to pay royalties to the Harry Fox agency, and then you can collect them here. You can get up to 12 checks a year at the Harry Fox agency. Now, the MLC, all right? Once a month, the Mechanical Licensing Collective pays you mechanical royalties, okay? Like I said, the mechanical royalty pool had to be broken up. This is the agency that came along with the United States MMA addition to Title 17, right? And so they broke up the monopoly once again, or or a they broke it down, put it that way. And because they had to do this, this is for digital mechanical royalties. They did this because people kept suing Apple Music and Spotify saying, where are my mechanicals? And Harry Fox agency wasn't doing that great of a job. In a nutshell, something had to be done. I'm quite sure there are other devious acts that were going on underneath the cover that everybody else doesn't know about. And I'm quite sure there are pretty, a lot more things that you could say in the comment section about the MLC. But they are pretty organized over there. I can't complain. I mean, they get it done. Okay? 12 checks a year you can get from the MLC here in the United States. Get your mechanical royalties over there. All right. Now. Uh, Music Reports Incorporated, the first person to break up the monopoly of the Harry Fox agency in 1994. They distribute four checks a year on your, um, your uh, what you call it, on your, um, on your mechanical royalties. You can get your, your mechanical royalties from Tidal over here, Amazon Music over here, TikTok over here, SoundCloud over here. What else is what else? Do, what are, I, I'm trying to think of all the money they get at Music Reports. Um, I, I'm missing. A, I know I'm missing. I'm missing a few. There's there's much more that I'm not mentioning. But go get your 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 uh, mechanical royalties at Music Reports. All right. So let's keep rolling. Four checks a year. Now we got we're gonna break down the right to public performance here. Okay. So let's go through Section 106 again. Exclusive rights and copyright and copyrighted works. I don't understand why they say copyrighted. It should be copywritten. I don't know, but that's how they say it. Subject to sections 107 through 122, the owner of the copyright under this title has the exclusive rights to do and to authorize any of the following. And in this case, number four, in the case of literary, that's your lyrics, musical, that could be like the musical notes on a piece of paper or manuscript paper, dramatic, that's acting out this stuff. 
and choreographic works that's dancing to the music that's on the paper. Uh, pantomimes, I never got what that was, but whatever. And motion pictures and other audio audiovisual works to perform the copyrighted work publicly. How do you get royalties from the performance of the copyrighted work publicly? Well, in the case of the song or the composition, you get it from a PRO. But major disclaimer, only a publisher can be a member of more than one performing rights organization. I'm going to say it again. Only a publisher can be a member of, one, of more than one performing rights organization. A writer or a self-published artist cannot be a member of more than one performing rights organization. So if I was a publisher, in which case I am, I could be a member at CSAC, BMI, uh, 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 ASCAP, all right, PRS, so forth and so on, okay? Now, major disclaimer again, publisher can only collect out of these 64 checks, 60 checks, a self-published BMI artist or writer could collect 60 checks a year, or self-published ASCAP writer could uh, collect 64 checks a year. I mean, BMI is 60, ASCAP is 64. Um, there is a reason for that because of the payout schedules. They're different, okay? So, and because you have to have a publisher's account and a writer's account to collect from both sides at the PRO, it's just that they pay out differently, Okay. Now, let's go. Since we're on the right of public performance, those performance royalties come from ASCAP. You can get up to 12 checks a year from ASCAP, but this is how they pay. They pay domestic writers on January, April, July, and October. They pay your international royalties that ASCAP has collected from overseas. They pay out February, May, August, and November. And then domestically, they pay domestic publishers here in America, March, June, September, and December. That's how you get your 12 checks. And if you're a self-published writer, you have to have a writer's account and you have to have a publisher's account. That's the only way you get all of these right here. You got to have both accounts. You know what I mean? Now, you can elect to send your publishing money over to your writer's account. But like I always say in other videos... Once you start making a lot of cash, you don't want this cash to be rolling through your social security number on a 1040. All right. You want to kind of start to build your business, get your, you know, taxes right. Let's get some write offs popping over here. All right. You know what I mean? So then now BMI, they pay out quarterly broadcast music incorporated pays you performance royalties quarterly four checks a year. Now I, here's the difference. Eight checks if you're a writer, meaning that the four checks you would get if you were just a publisher, you would only get those four quarterly, but you also have a writer's account if you're a self-published songwriter and you can get your four writer's checks, so eight combined at BMI. That was the difference that I was talking about just a few minutes ago. All right, let's keep rolling. Now, check this out. Right to public display. We're on number five. I won't go through the top again, but in the case of literary... OK, musical, dramatic and choreographic works, pantomimes and pictorial graphic. We, you see how to, it changed from number four to they added pictorial graphic or sculptural works, including the individual images of a motion picture or other audiovisual work to display the copyrighted work publicly. How do you display copywritten work publicly? Well, check it out. You know I've talked about this on my channel. Now, Music Match is one of the top people here. Now, you know the other player in the game, Lyric Fine, but we already addressed them, okay? So, Music Match here. Once a month, Music Match pays you digital lyric print royalties. You get royalties when people have their, you know, Apple TV or Roku TV and the lyrics are just flying by on the TV or on the phone you want to look at the lyrics while you're listening or Whatever, you get paid for this. When you're on Shazam and you're looking at the lyrics, you get paid for that. When the lyrics pop up on Instagram, you get paid for that. You get paid a royalty for this. This is called a lyric display royalty. You get 12 checks a year from Music Match. All right? So let's keep rolling here. Now, the right to digital audio transmission. All right? Now, subject 
to sections 107 through 122, the owner of copyright under this title, which is Title 17, has the exclusive rights to do and authorize any of the following. If we go down to number six, in the case of sound recordings. All right, so I'm going to stop right here. Okay. So this, this right here, if you remember in my TLC video, I said this. All right, but this one, the right to digital performance, this law or this ruling or whatever you want to call it was introduced in 1993. It wasn't approved just yet. We're on the cusp of Napster, Kazaa, P2P sharing, digital download. We're, we're on the cusp of the very first huge shift in the music industry at this point. Basically, what I'm saying is sound recordings refer to the record label. OK, like I said, this came out in 1994. This was added to Title 17 and Sound Exchange came out in 2001, I want to say. So they had to work this into law before they could assign some type of organization to collect for this. Obviously, that's how that happened. The law always happens first. But publishers like to claim that this is publishing money. But it's actually not. See, in the case of sound recordings, to perform the copyrighted work publicly by means of a digital audio transmission. What happens is a lot of times the artist will write their own records and therefore, you know, whether they wrote the records or not, more than likely they wrote some of their records and they will need to collect digital audio transmission royalties from here in America, sound exchanges. It's kind of like our neighboring rights so to speak because you know we only pay this digital audio transmission right on webcast radio and things like the cable music channel radio dash radio music choice Sirius xm stuff like that we pay for that but that's about it we don't pay for terrestrial radio and anything else across the board it's just some small things uh that they pay on and because it's that way and because the songwriter, well, not, excuse me, the artist and the record company gets the bulk of these royalties. And then when it comes to the arrangers, the background musicians, they get that extra 5% that shows up at SAC-AFTRA. But these, these royalties right here, they kind of get lost in the sauce sometimes and people are confused about it. What this does is it will allow your music publisher to con to con uh, to become what is called a CMO or a collection management organization. They don't begin they're they're not a publisher anymore. They add on the CMO badge, if you will, uh, to collect more than just publishing money by way of these six rights right here or these five rights. This one changes the game. Number six changed the game. Uh, and, and so that's that's what this is. Now, enough of my rant. Uh, where do we get this money from? Sound Exchange. All right. Once a month, Sound Exchange pays you digital sound recording performance royalties. That's plus 12 checks. OK, that's what it is. Now, final verdict. Register your music. Register your music. If you want to be. A self-published artist. Every video, somebody in the comment section wants to say, well, man, you know, forget the record label. I'm just going to go do it independently and stay at home in the house and be the digital artist and do the small stages and the this and the that. Okay, well, if you're going to do all the this and the that, then you got to go register at all these places. So if you're going to be independent, don't talk about it. Let's do it. All these places. You got to do all that work that you would otherwise get a record label or a CMO or a publisher to do for you, right? So I, I want you to think when you say, I'm going to be a record label, you know, I, I'm going to, well, what about the money that you got to pay? To, what about paying the producer royalties and the executive producer royalties? And what about the songwriters? And what about making sure everybody gets paid on time and all of the processes and then this and that? So when you say you're going to be independent, recognize that either you're going to put some people in position to handle all this registration and keep up with it, or you're going to do it yourself. So either you're just going to be that one instrumental-making producer that just stays in the bedroom and 
it was a bedroom producer for the rest of their life and all of that? Or are you really going to push to get your music out there and handle your business properly? Okay? Anyway, that's my final words. Let me hop outside of the computer. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching the show. Once again, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. Let me know that you made it to the end. I kind of like that because everybody's watching the TLC video and they're telling me they made it to the end. Let me know what you possibly want to see on this channel, okay? Um, you can always contact me by email through musicmoneymakeover.com with the contact form there. You can text me 470 well, it went away. 470-291-5767. Sub, like this video so it goes up for the YouTube algorithm. And I will greatly appreciate it. I'll talk to you all later. Or I'll see you all later. I guess. I don't know how that works on YouTube. Peace. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the show. Log on to musicmoneymakeover.com forward slash shop to download all my books and free guides. And while you're there, click on the book a call tab to get a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me to get all your music business questions answered and solved. Thanks for watching.